So, expectation. So x is our discrete random variable. If we want to work out what the expected value of it is, so we've collected all the data that we need, we know the probability of them happening, what will we expect the outcome to be? Uh, and the formula is this. The expected value of x will be the sum of x times the probability of x. Okay? And remember, probability of x, what I'm saying there is well, how we had it written before was probability of x equals x. I just write it as little px because it's quicker to write them. Capital px equals x. So you'll find people use the px notation just to save time. And we know that has to be bigger than zero. Turns out that it, it's just the, uh, the mean. So whilst we're now calling the expected value, it's something we have seen before. That's the average of the data or the mean of the data. Notice I put arithmetic mean there, because technically we use the word mean, but it's actually arithmetic mean. There is another type of mean called geometric mean, and that's when you multiply all the terms together and find the square root of it, because um, it's used in geometric series, as opposed to this one's used in arithmetic series. That's where it all comes from. So whilst we call average mean, it's more correct to say it's the arithmetic mean. And it's basically, because it is the mean, a measure of, you might remember this term from stats, central tendency. So basically, where is the middle of the data? You might recall another two ways we measured central tendency in stats. You want to remember what the other two are? We've got average. So mean, and the other two? Median. That makes sense, because median measures the middle. And then the other one, which I personally think is a pretty bad way of doing it. Mode. Not range. Mode. Mode's the third one. So mean, median, mode. They're all ways of measuring central tendency. Although, as I say, I think mode's a pretty bad one. But I suppose they're saying you tend to see the most frequent thing occurring in the middle of the data, but it doesn't always happen. All right. But all we're really concerned about is uh, average or expected value. So some laws of expectation. We're assuming A and B are just constants. So if we want to find the expected value of, and we play around with the function a bit, and we have AX plus B, then it's the same as A times the expected value of X plus B. And I can prove this quite easily. Because when we go back to our definition, so the expected value of AX plus B would be the sum of, well, instead of having X, I've now got AX plus B. So the sum of AX plus B times the probability of X. Now with sums, I can break the sum up into two parts if I want, because addition is sum. So I can say, well, that's the sum of AX PX plus the sum of B PX. But A and P are constants, so I can factorise them outside the sum. So I get A times the sum of X, P, X, plus B times the sum of P, X. And then that proves what we want, because B times the sum of the probabilities, well, the sum of the probabilities is always equal to 1. So that just becomes B, and the sum of X times the probabilities, well, that's what we define to be the expected value of X. So there's a, a proof of that particular relationship. Huh, will we use it? Well, who knows? But I'm going to use it later on with something I'm going to prove, so we certainly need to see it so I can use it later on. Okay, another one probably makes more sense. If you've got the expected value of two things happening, x plus y, then it's the expected value of x plus the expected value of, of y. So here's a, an example. So we've gone and done a survey. 25 families are polled to Finf. I think that's meant to be fine. Find the number of litres of milk consumed during a particular week. And so there's our results. So the number of litres consumed per week and the number of families that did that. So based on that data, how many litres of milk would you expect a similar family to consume in a week? So I'll draw up my probability distribution table. And there's all the probabilities. There's 25 there. Yes, they sum to one, as we expect, but I'll add another row in. I'll add in a row for x, px. So all I'm doing is multiplying the probability times x. 
so we get naught, and so on. Uh, that sums to be, I've read that as a decimal, 2.2. Okay, our formula is sigma x p x. Well, that's what I've worked out over there. So 2.2 is our expected value. Of course, the other way I could do it, remember I just said it's the same as the average. So if I wanted to go and say, oh, well, I'm going to work out the mean of all that. All right, well, I'll uh, add them all up. So there was two that had zero, five that had one, nine that had two, and so on and so on and so on. Divided by the total number of outcomes, which is 25, and we get our average of 2.2, uh, which is involving more work. I suppose it depends what we've already worked out. Um, I personally think the expected value is quicker than finding the average in this situation. So anyway, there's our conclusion. We'd expect a family, based on this data, to consume 2.2 litres of milk in a, in a week. Okay, note. Random variables have an expected value, whereas sample spaces have a mean. So that's the subtle difference between the two. So when we talk about random values, we don't really talk about average and mean. We say expected value. Whereas when we're just talking about sample spaces of things happening, that's when we talk about a mean rather than an expected value. Oh, that was quite quick. There we go. So 13B, some of those to play with working out the expected value of things to happen.